Hello and welcome to the revision session on the shoulder. First of all, we're going to have a look at the articulating bones of the shoulder. Here is our first one, which we refer to, of course, as our humerus, or our upper arm. So humerus is the word that gets you a mark. And here, I'll quickly draw around it, we have our scapula, or shoulder blade. And scapula, of course, is the term which you need to use. Okay, a couple of features you need to be aware of with regard to the shoulder joint. The first is that here we have the joint ligament, which attaches between the clavicle and the humerus and stabilizes the joint and prevents any kind of dislocation. Secondly, here on the head of the femur and here on the glenoid cavity of the scapula itself, we have the hyaline cartilage, which absorbs shock and prevents damage. We then now in green have the cavity itself, which I'll try very hard to draw in neatly. There we have this cavity, which we call the synovial joint cavity, um, surrounded by a synovial membrane, which emits synovial fluid, which lubricates the joint itself um, and prevents smooth movement of the joint. That synovial fluid is produced additionally in warm-ups, for example. Okay, now we're going to have a look at some uh, movement patterns at the shoulder. Um, first of all, we must be absolutely certain that we understand that if the arm comes in um, just make a mistake there. If the arm comes in front of the body, then we are talking about a position of flexion. And if the arm is behind the body, this time in red, we are talking about a position of extension. This isn't me, by the way, in this photo, you might be wondering, uh, nor any other member of the department, thankfully. Um, just clear that away a second. If we have a look on the left shoulder of this particular image, we see that the humerus here has been rotated in this direction. And we call this position lateral flexion. Sorry, I'll, I'll repeat that. Lateral rotation, which would actually be correct. And of course, if the arm was to move about its longitudinal axis in the humerus, that isn't longitudinal axis, in the opposite direction, we would then, in this case, have medial or towards the middle rotation. Finally, on this movement analysis part, we need to be aware that if the shoulder joint moves from a position here which of course we would call abduction. Adduction is where it comes down into this position, of course. But from this position, let's draw that back in, uh, from this position with the um, shoulder outstretched away from the midline of the body, if that then turns in, essentially in a hucking action, so that the arm finishes in this position with the arm out in front, we call that horizontal adduction. And this might be relevant to, for example, throwing a hook punch in um, boxing, for example. If, of course, the arm then goes back out into that position, we call that horizontal abduction. So horizontal adduction, hooking towards the midline of the body, and abduction back outwards. And that's horizontal adduction and horizontal abduction. So if we now have a look at this example of Rafael Nadal hitting a forehand in tennis, we could describe the position of the shoulder as it currently is viewed, as in the flexed position. But what we would say more accurately is that the shoulder has moved in this direction, and we would of course call that horizontal adduction, because it is moved from a position of abduction, without being lowered towards the midline of the body, so we call that horizontal adduction, and would describe the um, movement of the uh, shown by here by the tennis player. We would say here that the prime mover would be the pectoralis group, pulling the shoulder into the midline, and that the antagonist would be the posterior deltoid.
Now in a simpler example, we're going to have a look at a tricep dip. We would describe the position of the shoulder here as extension, which is out behind the body. And we would describe this type of contraction as concentric, because the muscle group is shortening as a contraction. Of course, that muscle group, which is shortening, we would describe as the posterior or back deltoid. The posterior deltoid is the prime mover. But you must also know the antagonist, in this case the antagonist here in yellow, is this part of the shoulder, which we refer, refer to as the anterior deltoid. And the front and back deltoid work as antagonistic pairs against one another. You must also be aware that when the shoulder fully circles, We refer to this as, oh, let me get that right, circumduction, which I'm going to struggle to fit in this space I've left myself. Circumduction, which is the product of flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction. Finally, I'm going to leave you with a quick test. There's three questions. First of all, name the articulating bones of the shoulder joint. Nice, simple. Secondly, describe two joint features of the shoulder joint. So it's a describe question. So you can't just name that one, get you enough marks. You must describe what those features do. And finally, um, you state the agonist and antagonist during the up phase of a tricep dip. So good luck with that. I'll give the answers in a moment. If you don't want the answers immediately, then press pause, please. So here come the answers. Articulating bones of the shoulder, of course, are the humerus and scapula. I'm sure you got those straight away. Describe two joint features where you've got a choice here. You could, for example, say ligament, and that is to stabilise. That would get you two marks, one for ligament and one for stabilise. You might have said synovial fluid, SF. And you might have said to lubricate. You could have also said things like hyaline cartilage to shock absorb. You might have said sign of your membrane to admit sign of your fluid and so on and so on, whatever you chose. Agonist and antagonist during the up phase of a tricep dip. Well, in the up phase, we actually come back, so the arm is coming forward. That's beginning to flex, so that is the anterior deltoid is the agonist, and the antagonist would be the posterior. So here, the agonist would be the anterior deltoid, the ant delt, and the antagonist would be the post delt. Thank you for listening and I'll see you tomorrow for another revision session. Goodbye.